high above the clouds where the earth exhales fire, we begin with the man standing on a sleeping beast. Behind him, one that's already woken up. This is Mount Sinabung, one of Indonesia's most active volcanoes and a headline regular on the Pacific Ring of Fire. After being dormant for over 400 years, it roared back to life in 2010 like a grumpy god that finally checked its notification. Since then, Sinabung has blanketed villages in ash, displaced thousands, and reminded geologists why this region matters. Today, volcanologists keep watch using seismographs, satellite thermal scans, and, most importantly, boots on the ground. It's magma, rich in silica, making eruptions explosive, the kind that don't just melt snow, they rewrite maps. But Sinabung is just one dot in a massive horseshoe of fire. The Ring of Fire loops across 40,000 kilometers. Three quarters of Earth's active volcanoes live here. It's less a ring, more like a pressure cooker with anger management issues. Now, just across the valley, Meet Sibayak, less explosive, more expressive. Sibayak doesn't erupt as often, but she hisses, boils, and steams, like she's always muttering under her breath. Fumaroles here reach temperatures over 120 degrees Celsius. The steam contains sulfur dioxide, which sounds scary, but makes for a striking yellow stain and that unforgettable rotten egg aroma. Scientists study these emissions to track subterranean pressure changes. Locals, they bathe nearby in natural hot springs. Stem meets spa day. Sibayak is also a great training ground, geologically and philosophically. Climbing her gives you a preview of Earth's moods without risking full-blown fury. Hikers often say Sibayak feels alive. Every hiss and rumble beneath your feet isn't just pressure, it's a pulse. The crater walls are stained in sulfur and silence. Sometimes you hear nothing but wind and boiling breath. Geologists consider her a dormant stratovolcano but like any old storyteller, she knows how to whisper and warn. And then, there's this. You're looking at the largest volcanic crater on Earth, Lake Toba. But don't let the calm fool you. 74,000 years ago, this was ground zero for one of the most cataclysmic events in planetary history. When the Toba supervolcano erupted, it blasted over 2,800 cubic kilometers of magma into the sky, enough to bury modern New York State under a kilometer of ash. It altered global climate for years, possibly plunging their planet into a volcanic winter. Some anthropologists believe it bottlenecked early human populations down to just a few thousand humans. Beneath its glassy surface lies a magma chamber that's still refueling, slowly, silently. In satellite gravity maps, the lake's outline almost glows with residual heat. Some scientists believe Toba could erupt again. Not soon, but not never. Until then, it remains both a graveyard and a cradle. A reminder that creation and destruction often share the same address. Today it's a peaceful freshwater lake 100 kilometers long. Villages thrive along its shores, but under it, magma still simmers. It's a living lesson. Even the quiet ones can change the world.
And it's not just geology that shapes this land. These volcanoes carve out ecosystems, lush, rare, and wildly alive. Sumatra's rainforests are home to critically endangered orangutans, singing gibbons, and ancient elephants. And if you enjoyed this glimpse into the fire and the forest, subscribe, hit like, leave a comment, or just tell the algorithm we're doing all right. Because the next chapter, we're going even deeper. This is the ring of fire, and we're just getting started. <laughs>